Sabrina the Animated Series, Episode 47. Why is him reading his escape plan out loud? People would hear it and stop him. What kind of prison wouldn't have any prison guards? And did they do no research on his pet to see if it'd be able to dig through the prison's ground? It's totally unrealistic that they'd even put his pet in a prison. This is insultingly lazy writing. How is a magical prison escapable? Sabrina complains that her vacation's gonna be ruined by her piece of shit family with no consideration for her. Hilda's not gonna be allowed to go on a skiing vacation because she can't ski. Why doesn't she point to make herself good at skiing? Salem imagines going on vacation and Zelda actually warps into his imagined spot and insists that she's gonna decide where they're gonna go. It just seemed surprisingly overpowered for an episode of this show. Quigley's too sick to go. He says they're going on a netherworld adventure tour this year. It's satisfying that when Sabrina says she's not going on another stupid vacation with this family, she isn't punished. They had no moral right to ruin her vacation when she'd been looking forward to it all year. I guess she only said this to vent. Because she should know that her aunts could warp her to them, so it doesn't matter what she says. Tim breaks into the house with his ray gun and talks, but somehow the family doesn't hear him, even though they're still in the house, and you'd hear everything that happens in the house from everywhere. Zelda reminds Sabrina that she got to choose last year. At least she had that. The family warps to the netherworld from the shower again. Tim even looks in the toilet. I guess he figured the portal to the other realm could be in there. But why? He finds their netherworld tour pamphlet, and the pet instantly shows them that the portal to the netherworld is somehow still open, when the other realm closet isn't supposed to work like that. He should have gone into it from the door in the attic then. It immediately wastes the concept by having him get to the netherworld instead of finding out what all the magical artifacts and potions do which would teach us. But to be fair, if he encountered Spooky, Spooky would kill him right away, if he didn't strike at him with his gadget first. And I get the writer thinking that him being in the Witch Realm would be dramatic and more visually interesting. A centaur wastes tons of time, and the ants are fighting over him, even though they know he's got only one good half, and they're only teens, so they'd only have a shot if he doesn't find out they're physically teens. They go on a boring boat ride. I don't care about the weird background. The tour guide says there's a scissor fish. That's more goofy looking than I expected, but still intimidating. Wait on the wrong place makes him slide off without them noticing him. And he uncharacteristically tells the monsters to eat his pet. When from his first appearance he showed that his pet was the one creature he loved. I guess it makes sense that he'd get tired of it after the gross end of his first episode where it wouldn't stop bothering him. And he says he'll use his invention to play the family against each other. Conveniently, he can shapeshift himself. That can't happen with science. This guy hates witches, so it's ironic that he's using inventions that could only work because of magic talismans. The Centaur subplot's just a boring waste of time. How do you fail to make a Witch Realm tour interesting? They just do normal rock climbing and nothing happens until Tim saves the day for the audience. Why does Tim have the same voice and still need glasses if he can shapeshift? Zelda wonders what's wrong with the fake Sabrina's voice and she's somehow not questioning the glasses. He says something to make Zelda competitive with Hilda. Then he turns into Hilda and says it's fun being evil. He says he has a frog in his throat. Then he tells Salem something about Sabrina to make him mad and says Salem should push Sabrina off the clouds. Salem asks how could she say that. Zelda says she should push Hilda off the clouds. But to be fair, witches could save themselves from any fall anyways. And while they look like idiots, they don't know somebody would be here to impersonate any member of their family. And they have a quirky bunch of relatives. So they could assume Sabrina or Hilda's just wearing glasses to be funny, out of extreme boredom with this. They narrowly avoid falling, and the family apologizes to the god, who's injured because somehow these witches can't heal him. 
How inconvenient that apparently this guy's immune to magic, including healing magic. And I assume that Tim can only shapeshift into people. Tim then disguised himself as a centaur, and somehow nobody questions his silly Arnold accent and the split being on the wrong leg. Or his glasses. Sabrina's questioning all this to Salem. It's sad when only she's suspicious. The centaur isn't known by them for being a silly joker. Sabrina says she saw aardvark tracks in the mud, so she accuses the centaur of being Tim. It's brilliant of her to instantly jump to the conclusion that Tim would be able to shapeshift himself because he's a gadgeteer, when we never figured he had that kind of device. And she thinks he's supposed to be in prison. Also, how did Sabrina recognize aardvark tracks? Hilda actually lampshades this. Salem says it's their education tax dollars at work, so I like that it tries explaining. Even if it's still obvious no school would actually teach you about such an obscure animal. I don't remember that from my school. And I love that they believe her and run from Tim, who trips and somehow turns back to normal. I assume that they all think magic will just be reflected back at them because it's Tim out of force of habit. Even though it would be common sense for them to have destroyed the device that trapped them in a force field, it doesn't even make any sense that he'd instantly have a shape-shifting device because why wasn't that confiscated and why didn't he just use that to escape prison? It's a miracle he even had his original clothes instead of a prison uniform. Although some prisons don't have prison uniforms, but a prison without prison guards where he's only shown in a cell like a stereotypical prison doesn't come off like it's forward thinking enough to not bother with uniforms. How inconvenient that these witches didn't make themselves unable to tire out from running. Salem thinks they're gonna die when a net's put over them. And the animal people drag them all away and they get covered in acorns. So the manga stole the idea of the enchanted forest from the show. Either that or they came up with it independently because it's such a cliche idea. Sabrina says they didn't go to their territory on purpose and warns them about Tim. Why does a guy with an accent like that tell Sabrina judgmentally that she sounds low class? It's a failed attempt at a joke. And Sabrina warns them about an aardvark when they hate them. Salem lampshades how convenient it is that this will get them released. We didn't even need this to happen, because the forest could have easily not been enchanted. So these so-called rodents were just padding. Sabrina tries using magic on Tim, and somehow her aunt also wastes time with that anyways. And the squirrel people put a net on Tim. So I assume the girls knew that their magic wouldn't work, and that's why they didn't do it earlier, and they were just stalling to make him stand still for the net. But that's a gamble. And I assume it working made sense because he wanted them to be embarrassed that their magic didn't work before he'd shoot them. He can't shapeshift into non-people after all. But it just becomes a mouse to escape the net instead of poison gas or something menacing, like a giant dragon. If he can compress his molecules to become smaller, he'd have to be able to expand them to become larger so that he could get back to normal after that. So he has to be able to become bigger. And I guess the mouse chewed the net because it's not small enough to fit through the hole. Shouldn't they have anticipated that he'd be able to go smaller to escape a net because it can shapeshift? I guess they were just hoping he would not get that idea. After the witches started talking about a plan to pool their powers, he had plenty of time to start running away. Instead he gets lasered. I never imagined that an enchanted forest would have people able to use magic even if they pooled their powers. It's believable, but that wasn't the case in the manga. And at least the manga tried to explain why the forest was enchanted. It is common sense that a place would be enchanted like that because of a spell in the first place. That spell, which would probably only exist because of the witches' council in an effort to protect the natives from witches. That spell would be made powerful enough that a few witches wouldn't be able to just pool their powers. A goldfish bowl with water lands on Salem's head, but at least quickly says sorry. Good thing Sabrina ends the episode in a cheerful mood, but the episode should be ending by showing Tim back in prison. It feels like she only spent a day in the Netherrealm anyways. This boring episode about a hike around the Netherworld forces the concept of Tim escaping a magical prison insultingly easily to the point where I wonder what took him more than a minute the first time. 
so that Tim could have Sabrina's house himself just to squander that interesting idea to spend the day following Sabrina's family when they're hiking. The only thing interesting about the Netherworld was the scissor fish, which didn't matter to the plot, and the squirrel people hating aardvarks because I guess they eat their crops, causing them to help the heroes catch Tim in a net. But they broke out anyway, so they could've just not existed. The force could only be enchanted because of a spell, but what's the point of even having a spell if it can be overcome so easily? This episode was boring unless Tim was spicing it up. Because it was just a normal hike through normal outdoor places that pretended to be interesting because of the background. In theory, that's good because it is realistic that a planet would consist of normal outdoor areas. So in terms of world building, it's a huge step up from the place not making any sense with no attempt at an explanation for why it is like that, like usual. This is what I wanted. It's sad that it took this long for the Hex world to feel like a real planet. My problem is the story needed a lot more weird aliens in it then. The place was a lot more interesting when Sabrina was trying to stop Salem from marrying somebody. As arbitrary as that lake was, at least it was interesting. How did Tim have a shape-shifting device when he just broke out of prison and didn't make it to his old house? All Tim got to do was shape-shift and lie. That's not why people liked him. He made things exciting though. Sabrina the Animated Series Episode 48 Moldy the Oldie I saw that title in a comic. Quigley somehow created a new plant because of Sabrina's invaluable help. I guess he used a cutting from his own plant, and that's his part of the creation. But the only way Sabrina could have any of the credit, and the only way he could make a new plant, is if he made it partially out of an other realm plant. The plant's criticized, and a leaf already falls off. Hilda tells Zelda her invisible cloak came right in front of the anti-magic bigot, who conveniently doesn't lecture them not to use it. Wouldn't it suck if it was never explained why they wanted this thing? I don't think they should have even written this because I can only think of one thing they would ever want this for. Because they're boy crazy. I get wanting to conserve magic, so that's why they don't just point to turn themselves invisible. It turns out Sabrina's great great grandpa's coming to visit. He's a jerk who pinches Sabrina's face, and keeps telling the same old stories that fascinate Zelda even though they hear it tons of times. And he hasn't visited Sabrina since she was two, somehow. So why is he pretending he loves them? Why does he even visit at all? He shows them a plant jar with snapdragons, and somehow he's surprised by them flying out of it, and Zelda destroys them. They smartly refuse his other idea of a gift. Why are the ants carrying a trunk he's selfishly weighing down himself up the stairs instead of levitating it? He's a jerk, so why should I care about his problems? He says he can visit them more, just because his office was moved closer to their house, even though a witch would be able to warp to their house at any time, like Enchantra. Sabrina tells her aunt she had plans to watch videos with her friend at any time, and somehow doesn't realize she could just warp to them. And Hilda doesn't have to taunt her by saying, them's the breaks, what a bitch. I have to assume that she plans on warping her back to her if she does go watch videos with a friend and Sabrina knowing that is why she won't bother. Why can't they just have compassion and let her go hang out with her friends? The jerk has a stereotypical old man voice, so most of the time it's impossible for me to understand what he's saying, especially over the loud sound of my typing. At least the flashback shows visually interesting things like a hurricane. He's shown using magic to plug the hole of nothingness with a pyramid. Cleopatra kissed his cheek and said being scared of a witch. I guess she already knew about witches, and the power-hungry person didn't try to take advantage of his magic to take over the world already. Because he could just turn her into a frog if he doesn't like her. The jerk says what could go wrong, which is usually a jinx line for badly written stories. I like getting to see Quigley's plant get hated by the judge and mocked. Why did he smile and proudly introduce his plant to her when she clearly looked judgmental and asked what that was? I can only come to one conclusion about Sabrina's family with them constantly misreading people's feelings for no reason. And that wasn't the intention with their characters from the start. Sabrina tells her evil grandpa he better not use magic. And he won't feel like a person if he does. But somehow he still uses magic to make the plant giant and cause trouble. If they kept it simple, 
and had him do this specifically to torment these judges, like the real Aunt Hilda would have, this would make sense and be entertaining to watch. He proudly says that's a plan he can write home about, but then he says alright and acts as if he wants the spell to stop. That's what sucks about this. Obviously, Sabrina or him would have instantly pointed to make the plant that gives away in witchcraft to become harmless. I actually prefer the patriarch of their family over him because he makes sense because he's honest about how he's intentionally evil, and so is the show. This guy, I have to just assume right away he's doing this all on purpose, but pretending he's not with the act that he's an old senile fool who's impossibly screwing up because he's smart enough to know that these idiots are so stupid that he'll get away with this act. And he thinks if he doesn't just put on an act, they'll use magic against him, because he's not as scary and intimidating as the Patriarch is. Sabrina won't just brainwash him into wanting to warp home, even though she was fine with doing that to Quigley and her stepmother. He's told there's a witchcraft test for him, and he tries to prove he's good at magic by saying a spell to make himself disappear. There's no reason he'd think he'd made himself invisible if he lost his clothes instead. He'd have to do this on purpose because he'd have to imagine himself still visible. Why don't these idiots brainwash him into leaving? They were happy about brainwashing a nanny. Salem has an idea and shows them a black and white projection video about everything you need to know to pass the witchery exam. Why would witches have settled for black and white film until recently when they'd be more advanced than mortals? Even without technology, you think witches would just point at black and white film to make it color. The asshole causes more trouble and walks intangibly through their door and leaves behind his shoe. Didn't he warp to their house just fine? How in the world is he always bad at magic if he's good at that? I get to see Quigley's car get destroyed. Again, this would have only been done on purpose. And somehow the old man doesn't even apologize, as usual, which would only make sense if he did it on purpose. The old man gets asked the password for the witch exam. He reads out what Sabrina thinks is the wrong password, but I guess by a big coincidence he's still let in. He sees troll licenses, ogre arbitration, and potion permits. The first two are too vague, making no sense, and the latter does make sense in a vacuum, but makes it illogical that the witches in the show ever used potions. Apparently, anytime Sabrina used a potion, it was illegal. Or you can get a potion for it very easily. So what is even the point? What kind of social skills does this guy have that he says an old man's been around for quite some time? So he greets every old person like that? Even if old men are really rare in the netherworld, this is stupid. Realistically, most witches would just point so that they don't look old. And the judge expects the old man to make his desk gold, and somehow there's drama around it, as if this wouldn't be extremely easy from just picturing the desk yellow. It's a new test of magic just added, which he didn't get to study for. And somehow the old man warps them all to a cold, blizzard-filled place, because he misheard him as telling him to make the desk cold. Witches would be able to zap up hearing aids, if not give themselves perfect hearing, like with a potion. Then he somehow warps them to an erupting volcano and warps them back to their office. This is so forced. Unless he screwed up on purpose to spite him because he was mad at him for springing another test on him. Hotheads don't tend to make rational decisions anyways. He's told he's too old to be a warlock. How convenient that he won't just turn him into a frog to avoid not being a warlock anymore, considering how stupid he was earlier. Sabrina says he shouldn't get to have powers anyways, and Zelda stupidly thinks it's not fair just because he used to do great things with his magic. How is the little kid smarter than her? And I wonder why the story expects me to believe he's bad at magic just because he has Alzheimer's. When Alzheimer's requires you to also have a bad memory that has you get stuck back in time. Being old alone doesn't mean you'll suck at what you were always good at. The idiotic family tries to demand a second test. Then aliens bear the judge a gift, and he naively expects it not to be a bomb or something when he was given it by someone that he failed. 
Wouldn't they have been giving gifts like this all the time? Go figure the whole of nothingness comes back, because we saw it before. I might as well just skip to the end of the episode at this point, because it's so predictable how it's gonna get resolved. It doesn't make any sense that he still has his power at this point after he got rejected as a warlock. I assume the other witches let him do it to prove to them that he shouldn't lose his powers. Based on just one spell. But that'd be stupid anyways, because he still failed the witchery test. And it's extremely lucky that he does succeed at this when he failed at everything else. Again, it only makes sense if he was failing on purpose. He didn't even plug the hole with the pyramid like last time, so he wasn't really using a skill from earlier. The judge gets called out on his stupidity. He didn't know to stop that hole. He says he might be able to renew his witchcraft license. On the spot. How convenient. Except not. He still hasn't proven to them all that he won't screw up with magic anymore. Sabrina says she didn't see how valuable his experience was. It's only from an extremely unlikely coincidence that it got to be useful, and realistically, all the other witches would have also been able to do the same thing as him, as that was common sense. And he didn't even plug the hole with the pyramid again, so it was barely a check of gun. This shitty episode, as Sabrina's great-grandpa be a total nuisance with his magic over and over, which was frustratingly insulting to my intelligence because he never confirms that he was doing this all on purpose. When the only way it could have happened when he's able to warp to them and save the day perfectly fine is if he did on purpose. Or had a witch virus like witch -itis. Somehow witch -itis is never said to be a possibility, so that's not it. Why do they have any affection for him? The episode pretends that getting horrible at what you used to be good at happens to everyone when they get old. Which is ageist. Because it really depends on the hobby. He doesn't think he's decades into the past with a terrible memory, so he isn't senile. He didn't plug the hole of nothingness with another pyramid, so it's not like he thought he was back in time. I'm somehow expected to think him getting his witchcraft license unrevoked because he saved the day from an extremely likely coincidence with one successful spell was a happy ending, even though he still proved that his magic causes nothing but trouble. This would be like an episode of a show vilifying the idea of a senile person having his driver's license revoked after he kept crashing, which is the only way this can relate to real life. I think the only moral of the episode was that you can benefit from an old person's experience. But all it taught me was that it only happens in very unlikely circumstances, and even then there's no way all the other witches wouldn't have also been able to save the day like him, so they must have let him do it anyways. No, the fact that sometimes people shouldn't be allowed to do things because they're too old might have actually been a better message. Ironically, the episode would have only had a chance of being good if it was explained from the start that he was abusing magic on purpose because he was provoked. Or it's a prankster, which would keep it simple. And instead of him failing from incompetence, he could have his license revoked because he's reported on for being evil. 